An Arizona murder case is back in the national spotlight. This one involves a wrongfully convicted killer known as the Snaggletooth Killer. He was later exonerated after a decade on death row. He will tell his story to a nationwide audience on the ID channel tomorrow. Ray Crone is talking about the mistake and the rush to judgment which changed his life. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney's here. You caught up with him and uh, thankfully not many have walked in his footsteps. Yeah, and his hope is that nobody else right. will ever have to endure what he went through. Deemed around the nation as the Snaggletooth Killer, Ray Crone became the face of a horrific Phoenix murder that happened three days before his arrest on New Year's Eve as 1991 turned to 1992. The evidence? A bite mark on the victim that officials claimed matched Crone's Snaggletooth bite. It was a rush to judge that nearly took the life of an innocent man. The name is devastating enough. The Snaggletooth Killer. But Ray Crone says no name could compare to the distress of being called a murderer when you didn't commit the crime. I'm innocent. Believe that. Ten years, three months, and eight days later, it finally came out. Crone frequented the CBS restaurant and lounge in Phoenix back in the day to play darts, but says he was home the night of the 1991 murder. The bartender working that night, 36-year-old Kim Ancona. She was found dead the next day inside the men's bathroom. I could see blood. I looked inside and, and saw the individual dead. There was a bite mark on Ancona, and in a matter of days, Ray Crone was arrested for the murder. Why? Both police and prosecutors claimed his bite mark matched the one on Ancona's body. It was the only evidence used in the 1992 trial against him. The jury finding him guilty and he was sentenced to death, newly on death row next to Arizona's worst. Well, somebody was next to me, somebody I knew was taken off and executed. But after a procedural error, he was granted a new trial. Yet the jury found him guilty again, based on that snaggletooth bite mark. And he was sentenced to life in prison. It hurts when you first leave that courtroom and go back, you know, I'm, I'm not getting out. I'm going to be in this prison God knows how long. He all but thought he'd die in prison until technology changed. In 2002, DNA on Ancona and from the crime scene was tested and matched somebody else. This man, Kenneth Phillips, who was already in prison for violent crimes. DNA was the key. It saved my life. All the other evidence that pointed to someone else did not matter. Crone was in prison when his attorney called, a moment that still chokes him up more than 20 years later. He said, I just got off. I just got off the phone with the prosecutor's office. They just got back from the judge's chambers. They're cutting the paperwork. You're coming home today. In 2002, Chrome became the 100th person exonerated and released from death row in the United States since 1976. That number now close to 200 in 2023. It's why Crone has since dedicated his life to speaking around the world against wrongful conviction, working with organizations like the Justice Project, knowing while his story is shocking, it sadly isn't a sole outlier. Because there's people just like me, Ray Crone's in our prisons right now that may never have that chance to be free. Crone now has an A plus <laughs> smile and has settled into life in Tennessee. He's here now to tell other families it's never over till it's over. Keep the faith, keep the strength. Maybe one day the Lord will bless you too, but you don't give up. You don't quit. Crone says he cannot thank his supporters enough who stuck with him from his arrest the day he was free, believing in his innocence. The episode on the ID channel tomorrow night is called Crime Scene Confidential, where Crone tells more of his story. Guys. And he's told his story uh, several times. He still gets emotional talking about it. You can yeah. see his, his um, eyes well up with tears. Mm -hmm. What about settlement money? Was there any cash from the city of Phoenix or Maricopa County? Yeah, a lot of people ask that question. Yes, he had settlement money, millions from both mm. the city of Phoenix and Maricopa County. Now he lives in Tennessee, and like you, we said, in that story he's doing advocacy work which is great but I mean it was it was wild interviewing him he was telling me that he was first convicted and sentenced to death then that second time he was sentenced to life in prison he said the conditions in, in death row were almost better than life in prison because you were more isolated life in prison it was more the the prison gangs you were out in the yard he said there was a lot more violence so that was just something I hadn't heard before I, obviously it's a perspective we don't hear much of but it just goes to show we talk about the power of DNA all the time now in 2023 but even in 2002 that got somebody who was innocent off death row and it's pretty incredible so
Certainly, and you, you keep doing all these DNA stories. It's like every week there's something new or something different when it comes to that, for sure. Yeah, I, I, it's, it is the way of the future, and I'm honestly excited to see where it goes. Okay, Brianna, yeah, thank you so much.